Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. This is episode 60 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this video, we're going to talk about something very basic. Um, I suspect most of you know about this, but invariably, when people watch my Lightroom videos and they see me doing anything in the calibration tab, I will get an email from someone asking me why their Lightroom is different than my Lightroom. And I thought it would be worth doing a quick video to just go over it and explain it maybe a little better than I did in those other videos. What I'm specifically talking about is in the calibration, camera calibration tab, under profile, you'll see that right now it says Adobe Standard and there's a drop down here. And what happens is in my other videos when I'm showing how to process images in Lightroom, People see this and they'll see that on this specific image, I have Adobe Standard, Camera Landscape, Neutral, Portrait, Standard, and Vivid. And they'll email me and say they don't have that at all, or theirs are different, or something like that. And I thought I could better explain it in this video. What this means, these profiles, uh, camera manufacturers offer you the opportunity to have your images processed in very specific ways. Nikon calls these picture controls. And if I wasn't shooting RAW, let's say I was shooting JPEG, in my Nikon menu system, I could specify one of these picture controls for my JPEGs to utilize. So for example, if I was shooting this like landscape here and I wanted very vivid colors. Maybe I would choose camera vivid and you'll see it takes a second there and it like kicks in this different type of color profile for processing the image. Now, the advantage of shooting raw is you have all these choices available in post. So I could choose any one of these. The disadvantage of shooting JPEG you just get one when you take the picture and it's burnt into the JPEG and you won't be able to change it in post-production. That is why often people will email me and they'll say that in their profile all they have is embedded. And I'll jump over to this image over here and this is a JPEG I took. And you could see I took this in camera as a JPEG, actually quite by accident. But it was, and you could see it's embedded. I can't change my profile. That's why it's really an advantage to shoot raw. There's a lot of advantages, and that is one. You could really choose your camera profile in post-production. The other thing that people ask me is what they're seeing here is quite different than what I might have. Now, in this case, this was shot with an Icon D800E. And what you'll find is the profile choices will be different from manufacturer to manufacturer and furthermore even different from model to model this is a again a nikon d800e we have camera landscape neutral portrait standard vivid this image here is a nikon d500 my nikon d500 has flat landscape monochrome neutral portrait standard vivid so it has what the other one had but it also added uh, monochrome and flat. So the Nikon D500 has a couple extra choices, flat and monochrome. So again, this will change depending on your manufacturer and uh, what model camera you have. Now I mentioned that Nikon calls these picture controls. Fuji calls them film simulation modes. And let's jump over to a Fuji image, which is right here, I believe. Yes, this is a Fuji RAW file. And you can see the choices I have for Fuji are Camera Pro Via Standard, uh, Velvia Vivid, SDS Soft, Classic Chrome, and so on. These are actually film simulation modes. What, what Fuji is doing, they're offering you the opportunity to try to mimic the look that one of their specific films would give you if you were shooting a film camera. So this is pretty cool. So you have all these different choices, like, you know, classic chrome that kind of um, like a Kodachrome kind of look, even though that's a, a Kodak film, but that's the kind of look they're talking about. Um, 
So you could go to these different types of uh, film looks, and that's why uh, Fuji calls them film simulation modes. Now, I mentioned if you shoot JPEG in camera, you could choose one of these in camera. So if I was, uh, this was shot with a Fujifilm X-T1, if I wanted to shoot just JPEGs, I could, let's say, shoot that I want to uh, shoot JPEGs with classic chrome. That means every image I take is going to be this classic chrome film simulation, and I will not be able to change it in post-production. It's going to be burnt in there. That's why most of us prefer to shoot in RAW. That way we have all the choices available to us in post-production. This one I might like to be classic chrome, but the very next image in the sequence, maybe I prefer that one to be in some type of black and white mode. So, so you get the idea of what I'm talking about. Now again, uh, JPEGs, it's burnt in. If, TIFF file, if you sent this image, you had a raw image and you sent it over to some noise reduction program or something like that, you would lose the opportunity to change your profile. So make sure you change it beforehand in the raw file. If you create a virtual copy, as I did here, here's the exact image. It's a 2783 RAF, and I just created a virtual copy. And then I process this one in black and white. But my profiles are all still available for my virtual copy. So that is an advantage also. Now here is the TIFF file of this image. And you could see it's embedded. I can't change it. So if you're ever going to do anything with your profiles uh, for your camera in post-production, make sure you do it to the RAW file. If you're like me and you often use an external program, specifically for my case for noise reduction, then I make sure that I'm going to do the, any profile uh, choices ahead of time because I'll lose it once I get it back because it comes back as a TIFF file. So you should be aware of that. Now again, this changes from manufacturer to manufacturer. This was a Sony A7S II uh, camera. So they have Adobe Standard, Camera Clear, Camera Deep, Camera Landscape, Light, Neutral, Portrait, Standard, Vivid. So that are, are uh, profile choices that are specific to that model Sony camera. Now I'm not sure what Sony calls it because I'm really not a Sony shooter. Uh, so I, I apologize for that, but but those are specific profiles for that Sony camera. This uh, is an HDR image that was made through Lightroom. Now, typically, if you use an external program for HDR images like Photomatics or something like that, you will lose the opportunity to change your profile afterwards. But the advantage of doing either an HDR or panorama in Lightroom is it returns it as a DNG RAW file. So all my Fuji choices are there. So I wanted to make you aware of that. So if you're doing HDRs or panoramas in Lightroom, it will return a RAW file. And because it's returning the RAW file, you'll have all those profile choices available. Now, this I showed you a minute ago, a Fujifilm X-T1. This was a Fujifilm X-Pro2 camera. So this has some different, it has these Acros uh, choices here. So it has more choices. So that's why it's, I mentioned it's very camera specific. So that's specific to that model camera, whereas the X-T1 doesn't have as many choices as you can see. So the X-T1. Now, what you'll find also is if a manufacturer updates the firmware for the camera, often a firmware update will include some new profiles. I believe, if I remember correctly, when I initially got my X-T1, it did not have Classic Chrome. And one of the uh, firmware updates uh, included the Classic Chrome Film Simulation Mode, or Profile. So that's what really this is all about. I, I know most of you guys probably already know this, but I just wanted to maybe go over it a little more specifically. Great advantage to shooting RAW is you get these great profiles you could choose. The profiles are going to be specific to your make and model camera. If you shoot JPEG or TIFF, or if you send the RAW file into an external uh, plugin, 
and it comes back as a TIP file or, or a PSD file in some cases, you're going to lose the opportunity uh, to change your profile. So make sure you do it to the raw file ahead of time. All right, that's it for episode 60. I hope that made sense. I know I was kind of talking in circles there, and there's a lot of different examples I was showing you. I really do appreciate you guys watching my videos. Thank you so, so much. I really do. I'll talk to you guys soon.